Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night, which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word with and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ, yesterday and today, in the beginning and end, The Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. And by these holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and protect us. Oh. 
on this night we sing with joy to praise and thank the unseen God and Jesus Christ the Son, the power of this holy night dispels the darkness of our shame, for Christ has saved us with his blood and ransomed us from death. O oh, happy fault of Adam's sin, O oh, blessed day of grace, which gained for us a Savior Christ the
Dear sisters and brothers, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be a light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let, there, and let them be signs for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with the waters with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God he created him. 
Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing the response to the psalm, Lord, send out your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? 
tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them and a pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us free, let us flee from the children of Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of the Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Like a 
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. So you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way, and the uprighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from the heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bear forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing the response to the psalm, With joy you shall draw water. Sure, you shall draw water. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us be seated as we listen to the Epistle of Paul. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For, with, for if we have been united with him in a death like, the, like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old, old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you and with your spirit. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew after the Sabbath at the first day of the week was dawning Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb and suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it 
His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. A magician was working on a cruise ship in the Caribbean, and the audience would be different each week. So the magician did the same disappearing tricks over and over again. However, there was a problem. The captain's talking parrot saw the shows each week and began to understand how the tricks were done. Soon he was shouting to the audience, Look! It's not the same hat. He's hiding the flowers under the table. See, all the cards in the deck are the ace of spades. Of course, the magician began to loathe the parrot. One day the boat had an accident and sank, and you guessed it, the parrot and the magician ended up in the same life raft. They stared at each other in utter contempt and never spoke. After a few hours, the parrot in desperation, finally said, Okay, I give up. I'm amazed at this one. Where did you hide the ship? For too many of us, it's difficult to be amazed. Life becomes routine. Marriage feels like a comfortable old sweatshirt. Nothing our spouses say surprises us. Some feel they can predict what their better half will say even before it rolls off their tongues. Notice I didn't uh, take sides on which is the better half. And after a few years living in religious community, it's even worse for me. At least you only have to listen to your spouse tell the same story over and over. I have to hear it from a number of guys who tell the same stories. And I'm sure some can, can predict what I might say on many topics. And I'm guessing nothing I say at the pulpit amazes you. The gospel implies that they were amazed. The resurrection is a new story which has not been told before. Nothing like this has ever happened before. And it begins to dawn on the disciples that the crucified one has risen. The women were the first witnesses and hopes that were dashed were reignited. There is new life. Can we allow ourselves to be amazed? Can we open our minds and hearts to the fact that the transformation of Jesus can happen to us as well? Maybe not in a literal sense, but in a spiritual sense. Can we believe it and live it? And then can we not only be amazed, but amazing? Start forming the body of Christ, be Jesus for others by living love, even daring to love enemies, Build God the kingdom of truth and justice, trust and joy, peace and prosperity, hope and healing, faith and freedom. All of tonight's readings speak of the story of our loving God, the opening words of creation to the liberation of the Israelites, to the consoling words of Isaiah. We could say the, that these readings easily make the top ten in Scripture readings. And the Psalms following the readings are the actual greatest hits of Israel. And perhaps David was the first rock star. Paul reminds us that we have died with Christ. And Matthew takes us back to the earliest accounts of the resurrection. 
So let us allow ourselves to be amazed by all this and let us get moving. When we see something awesome and magnificent like lives committed to the Lord, let's be stunned. And then we can let the Holy Spirit reinvigorate our lives to bring Christ to a culture that is largely secularized and jaded. There's so much hurt and pain out there. And sometimes the only way we can help is to stay with people in their pain until they begin to see the joy of the resurrection. A Jesuit I met in St. Louis about 25 years ago named John Cavanaugh was a famous preacher and author, died about five years ago. He wrote this about Holy Saturday. Jesus entered the deeps of death, a plunge he need not have made had he not loved us in our sorry state. But he went to his death with a yes, with the utter trust of Abraham, the constancy of Moses, the bright reliance of Isaiah. In Easter's vigil, we plunge with him. Are we not aware that we, who were baptized with Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Being like him through likeness to his death, so shall we be through a like resurrection. The former Cardinal of Chicago, Francis George, before he was ordained a bishop and eventually Cardinal, was once the Assistant General of our Oblate Congregation. He was visiting some missionary Oblates in Africa and tells the story of some local tribesmen coming to the Paris Center to learn about Jesus. One man refused to enter and Cardinal George engaged him in conversation and gently asked him why he did not want to listen to the lessons that others were so eager to hear about. The man replied, I've decided it makes no sense when I look at my life and the lives of those around me that God would love us, that God would be willing to sacrifice himself for us, that God is stronger than the spirits who bring harm to us. I just don't believe it because it's too good to be true. See, the man was unable to be amazed, and for, for him the world is what it is, what it's always been. But for us who've been given the gift of faith and have opened our minds and hearts to the realities of our awesome God, the world changes again this night. The dawn brings the power of the love of God, the God we experience in the community of the church, the God we receive in the Eucharist. So let us allow ourselves to be amazed and then let's get moving. Dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is con concluded, let us renew the promises of baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do and all his works, and all his empty promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed in us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Confident in our loving God's gracious mercy, we ask now that he consider our prayers. For the church, that we will continue to be instruments of Christ's light for all who live in darkness, of hope for all who know pain, and of love for all who experience rejection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of creation, that God will guide us in protecting and preserving the earth that God saw to be very good, so that our descendants may share in God's generous gifts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who yearn for liberation, that God will lead them to freedom and wholeness, all who are enslaved, held unjustly, bound by addiction, oppressed by poverty, caught in the middle of warfare, or under quarantine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who thirst for something more in life, that they may come to the living water that satisfies all the longings of the human heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of reconciliation and healing, for families that are divided, for churches and communities that are at odds, and for nations that are in conflict, that the power of the resurrection may bring new opportunities for healing growth and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the human family, that God will deliver us from the COVID-19 virus, keep safe all who are vulnerable to the disease, and protect all healthcare workers who are serving those who are ill. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health and healing, look with compassion on our world brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of, gra of the grave challenges that assail us, and in your fatherly providence, grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those working to eradicate this scourge, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirits and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, Cleanse me from my patterns of sinfulness. And pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this night, above all, to laud you ever more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, when he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son and his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and be filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. For your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And gathering our prayers together now, we dare sing the prayer that Jesus taught us all.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring you to new and everlasting life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is Bread of Life from Heaven.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten, endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. <clears throat> Amen. And may, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go oh, forth the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, Baptized in Water. 